intense. Welcome to whiskey.com where fine spirits meet. My name is Lüning, Horst Lüning. I'm the master taster of whiskey.com and today we have the Glen Farkless 105 here on my cask. It's quite a cheap bottle. It's well below 40 and it's bottled with a high proof of 60 ABV. Wow, really strong. And from this uh, the whiskey gets its name 105. In former times uh, you weren't able uh, to de determine the alcoholic content of a whiskey with a spindle. No, uh, there was a procedure with uh, gunpowder and you mixed it with the alcohol and then you lighted it. And when it burned with a yellow flame, it was proof. Uh, when the flame was light blue, then it was underproof. And lighter than light, <laughs> it was overproof. And in later years, uh, they measured well this point and it was around 57 you find in the literature 57.1 uh, 57.3 um, and this was called a hundred proof and then uh, every three uh, percent alcohol was five proof why I don't know imperial measurements and this is in contrast to the US proof, where the US proof you divide by two and you reach the alcoholic content. So 100 proof in the US system is 50% ABV. So this 105 is 100, means 57, plus three, means 60. And here on the uh, bottle it says 60% uh, alcohol. This is a full liter bottle, so more than the typical uh, 0.7 or 0.75 liter bottle. And if you uh, calculate it down to 40% and 0.75 liters, then you have a really cheap whiskey below 20. This is in comparison to other single malts, it's really cheap. <clears throat> For a uncolored Sherry cask matured single malt whiskey from a small and independent distillery, Glen Farkless. Goodbye from the paperworks. Um, there are bottles on the market where on the back label or on the back of the tube, there's no back label on the bottle, the back on, of the tube, they are saying uh, bottled at 10 years old. So there are bottles with an age statement on it, and there are bottles without. And this came from the extreme demand for this whiskey. Uh, and so from time to time, they, I think, do not have enough whiskey to bottle at 10 years old, so they omit it. And well, you have a nine year or eight year old. This does not matter as long as they choose those intense sherry casks for the bottling. <clears throat> In 1968, my father, George S. Grant, decided to bottle a cask of Glen Farkless at natural strength as a Christmas gift for family and friends. The strength of that single cask was 105 degrees British proof. So Glen Farkless 105 was born. We still select some of the finest casks from warehouses and vet them together without adding water to give a constant strength of 60%. Without adding water... So this is cask strength. You have to mix different strength to result in 105 proof. This is different to others which dilute with water to 57, 58 somewhere. Uh, then you can only call the whiskey high proof because you added water. And in this case, it's cask strength. <clears throat> and today, Glen Farkless 105, the world's first commercially available cast strength whiskey, is just as smooth as ever. Bottled at 10 years old, Glen Farkless 105 is dry and assertive with a rich spiciness that combines with hints of oak and sherried fruit to create a perfect warming dram. In short, all the great flavors of Glen Farkless in one glass. <clears throat> and... 
There's this miniature of it. Uh, and with this miniature, it isn't said uh, if there's a 10 year old in it or not. Because there are different batches um, which add to 60, uh, the taste might change from batch to batch. But as I imagine, uh, they bottle tens of casks together, so the, the average of the taste will stay quite the same. So as long as the cask number is high enough, <clears throat> the taste will be comparable between each batch. <sighs> Intense. Oakiness. Powerful. Not too alcoholic. There's a distant smell of alcohol, yes. There's some apples and some sweetness. Yeah, vanilla, caramel coming through. So this is a wonderful, balanced, intense whiskey. And the dominant aroma is sherry, of course. Yeah. Just bring it down to well below 50. There are marks in the liquid. Takes a little bit. The caramel and vanilla is getting stronger. And the apples go over to pears. Still sweet. And sherry. Yeah. Wonderful, full on my tongue, a little bit dry, yeah, and mm, an oaky edge. Yes, there is oak in it, and it's getting stronger. Mm, dark chocolate. Mm, a little asymmetric, so the nose has been wonderful, and the taste has been a little, a little bit intense. Yeah, sherry is still there. Now it's wonderful. And this is the same with the 10 and 12 years old at Glen Farkless. From my personal view, those whiskies have a little bit too much of, of oakiness. And with the 15, 17 years old and 21 years old, then the oakiness is becoming smoother and not that bitter. So I prefer the whiskies above 10, 12 years, 15 years. I tasted an awful lot of whiskies from Glen Farkless, really. So vintages and cast strength and, and whatever. And the younger ones are, well, wonderful value for the money, but they miss the, the wonderful balance in the taste. Very intense. I think I, I just fell below 50. So it's quite quite intense still. Yeah, definitely a buy. It's really worth the money. It's below 40 and you get a full 60% and a full liter bottle. So if you divide everything down to 40% whiskey, then you reach numbers below 20, below 30, sorry, uh, might reach 20s, yeah. 
Thank you very much for watching. Stay tuned as always. There's more to come and feel free to share this video with your friends and give your comments in our risk pay base to this bottle.